briefly see how to perform a QC of a FastQ dataset coming from an Illumina sequencer. First, let's have a look at where uh, our reads are located. So we have a folder in our machines uh, in a position called slash data. So it's a directory in the, at, at the root of the file system. Uh, it contains several subdirectories. They can be slightly different, but all of you will have a data metagenomics directory. And then for sure you'll have a subdirectory called reads. Reads contains, as you can imagine, the raw data from a sequencing uh, experiment. In this case, let's do an LS with minus L switch to have a long format and have more details. So this is a pair end sequencing of one, two, three, four, five, and six samples coming from a paper. Uh, so uh, they, they come from a public repository, but they are, uh, they are or they should be as they, they came from the machine. So first, let's try to see how the terminal can help us in having some very basic details about our data set like how many reads are there uh, in a, in a FASTQ file. There is a program called SIGKIT that has, uh, as the name implies, several sub-programs, sequencing toolkit. So if I run SIGKIT alone, uh, it will tell us all the sub-program like common tasks, uh, concatenate, convert, um, FASTQ to FASTA to remove quality, for example, grab to uh, select sequences uh, according to the name. But what we are interested in now is stats. Stats will print simple statistics of FASTA or FASTQ files. So let's try sick kit stats. Here we are receiving a small hint to know how stats work. Just help the minus minus help switch. Okay, so stats is very simple. Sick it stats, then we can add some flags, these flags or switches, and then uh, we add the, the defined names, one or more. So we are not interested in the, in the, in the switches, so let's try sick it stats slash data, let's use the tab to complete the path so we are sure not to make mistakes. And then instead of seeing every single possible file, let's have a look at just uh, the first sample to start with. So six, nine, four, eight. Uh, let's use the star to have the statistics of both files because being a pair then the sequencing, uh, the R1 and R2 files should contain, of course, the same numbers, uh, some number of sequences. So this will take a little bit while. Then, okay, so what, what is this program telling us? For each file, uh, it's guessing the format that can be either FASTQ or FASTA, the type that can be either DNA or protein, and what you're interested in is uh, the number of sequences, then the total nucleotides present, so it's uh, 300 millions, and then minimum, average, and maximum length that can uh, uh, can be useful for sequencing technologies with different read length, but for Illumina, uh, if there is no trimming involved, all the reads have the same length. So this is, uh, is a, a paired end uh, 250 base per sequencing. Very good. Now we want to have a look at the qualities. So let's remember that uh, a FASTQ file contains for each read the sequence and then the quality. The quality being for uh, a, a set of symbols representing a number, a positive number, that is the Q score or Fred score that is uh, uh, itself uh, the integer representation of a floating number that is the probability of an error. So on average, Illumina quality range is 
from one error every 1000 bases to one error every 100 bases where the quality is low or even more but of course this is just for extreme examples okay so let's try to plot some statistics uh, aggregated statistics about the quality uh, about all the sequences for doing this we can use the fastqc program so first let's create a directory where to put the output so mkdir in our home that we can shortcut as tilde we have a subdirectory called web that is very useful because we can access the content of the, these directories from a web, web browser and so we are going to um, to put the output of fastqc directly in a subdirectory of the web subdirectory because uh, fastqc will print some html reports that are easy to see from a web browser so Let's simply call the, the subdirectory fastqc as the name of the program that we are going to use. Now we can invoke the program fastqc again with minus minus hat to have a look at the parameter that we can use and in particular fastqc work with a set of files so we can give one, two or more files <coughs> We can specify the output directory, now we know where to put them. And there are some other uh, filters that we can uh, enable, for example, um, uh, well, there is the thread parameter to use more than one CPU. We can specify a specific uh, set of adapters to some, have some statistics about them, but we can use the, the default that contains some uh, commonly used adapters. So let's go with fastqc. We can use four threads. And it's important to remember where to put the output. So it's in our home, in web, and then fastqc. And what do we want to create the fastqc for? Well, we have some reads in data, metagenomics, reads. We can create the statistics for every single file with a star or we can select some samples but uh, for for you I will I will create the statistics for everything for your tutorial so you will be suggested to create the fastqc report just for uh, a single sample it's important to do the fastqc both for the r1 and both and the r2 because usually uh, the reverse pair sequencing um, has more problems and so it's, it's, it's going to have on average a lower quality so it's good to have a look at how lower it is, how, how different they are. Okay, so what does this program create? Let's have a look inside our home web and then fastqc folder. Okay, so for each sample uh, two files have been created. One HTML file, that is the report that we are about to see, and one zip file. What does this zip file contain? Let's have a look. So, it's an alternative version of the report, basically, uh, that we can ignore for the moment. It's uh, just useful to uh, to be archived basically. So we can go to our IP, we will see the home page of the web server installed in our uh, virtual machine and at the end of the list we have this public HTML link that is the link to the directory where we did uh, create the output. So what we can see is that indeed we have the fastqc directory that we created, we can open it and we see the output uh, of, uh, of the fastqc program that uh, is indeed the list of HTML report and zip files. So we are interested in the report, we can immediately access them. And the report is basically summarizing uh, the quality values uh, per position. So what we, what we can usually see is that <coughs> there are good scores uh, in the first pair, whole read, but if we go and see the R2 report for the same sample, 
Well, we see that indeed the quality drops uh, in a, a quicker fashion. The slope is uh, more evident and usually we need to trim the end of the R2 to have better results depending on the algorithms that uh, we are going to use. We see uh, the per base sequence content. This is usually uh, useful to see if there is some uh, evident adapter contamination or primer contamination at the beginning when uh, there could be some very evident spikes. Then we have the GC content distribution. We have the theoretical distribution and the observed one. This is, uh, for example, useful when we sequence a single genome. Of course, with a metagenome, we have the sum of multiple uh, independent genome, and so indeed we can see some uh, spikes that could be three phyla, for example, uh, contributing to this uh, uh, shape. Then we can see if some position uh, had some uh, evident problem because uh, if there is a spike in N content in some position, there could be some problem in the, uh, in the sequencing process. Uh, of course, the read length distribution is something that we are interested in only for uh, ion proton or nanopore sequencing since uh, Illumina uh, has a, a fixed cycle of sequencing so all the reads uh, have the same length. Also the duplication level can be interesting. Uh, in this case uh, it's, uh, it's very strange to have a high duplication rate so we have just some reads uh, present twice uh, while most reads are unique, and this is very, very common for metagenomics, is sometimes uh, uh, can, can, can be an indicator of problems if we had uh, to over amplify the genome because the sample was uh, 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 very limiting, and so we did uh, some whole genome amplification, like with uh, amplify uh, enzymes.